we're going to be using today is six pounds of meat. So, we're using a half a tablespoon. Of, uh, coriander seeds that are going to be ground in this little coffee grinder here. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to use about half a tablespoon of mustard seeds. Actually, we don't need to grind the onion powder or garlic powder. We use this bowl for our spices. Okay. Okay. Teaspoon of onion powder. You can use hot tap water out of this sink when you're ready. Okay. Um, the way I came up with this recipe is I watched a bunch of different people make bologna, kielbasa, and hot dogs. To get their basic methods down and the basics on. Uh, seasoning it and now right before your eyes I'm coming up with my recipe from some notes and some different ingredients and, and, and reasons why and I'll try to explain that to you the best I can as we're going but none of them or any two of them even match this recipe not even one if you took two and combined it you ain't going to get my recipe here so that's another tablespoon of garlic powder, a whole tablespoon of garlic powder, and a whole tablespoon of onion powder in this bowl. And we're going to be using six pounds of grass-fed lean ground beef. Now this is uh, mace. Now, I'm going to eyeball this, but you want about a teaspoon. In here we have a teaspoon of mace, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, Half a tablespoon of mustard seed and a half a tablespoon of coriander seed. And uh, steal some pepper out of here. Tablespoon of black peppercorn.
We're going to grind that into a powder. Best way, short, quick pulses. out with the rest of our spices. <clears throat> we gotta wait on paprika. Don't let me forget the paprika. So salt. To make this recipe we put a half a tablespoon of garlic and a half a tablespoon of uh, onion powder and it should have only been yeah we put in a whole tablespoon of each and it should have been a half a tablespoon so we're going to try to do the salt deal here this lid don't come off this don't want to pour i got some salt here regular iodized salt go it's two full tablespoons and it's for eight pounds of meat so it's not too bad what we have here is some uh, non-fat dry milk instant milk if you will We need a cup full for this recipe. No, this is not a whole full package. We use some to add to our instant mashed potatoes. But it turns out there's pretty close to just a cup left. I got a little too much. See if I can get it back into this bag without making a major mess. I'll do it over the sink. Of course, if I do it over the sink, I'll pour it like a pro, right? Nope, I spilled some anyway. Okay, so we got a cup of non-fat dry milk. Now, one of the things that does is does flavor it, the traditional hot dog bologna type flavor. Um, and it's also a binder. It binds it together. Okay. This is just the generic stuff. From Walmart, great value brand. All right. Now, in this mixer, we're plugging over here. We're not going to plug in over there. Plug it in over here. You do it without knocking my cameras over. We're going to add our spices with our salt. And we're going to add our milk. And then, um, See how we're making hot dogs, and we're not going to put them in a smoker. If we were going to get, take the time to cold smoke them, we wouldn't have to do this. But we're going to add some liquid smoke. I'm going to go with a tablespoon. And that's a Colgan liquid smoke brand. I found that one at Walmart. ShopRite sells it. We're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. This is going to replace a lot of the fat. Unsweetened, 
unsweetened applesauce, a third of a cup. Goes in here with the spices. One and two thirds cup of uh, cold water. Remember, we're still waiting on paprika. We're gonna just give this a little mix. Incorporate all them spices together. Now we want to keep everything ice cold while we're waiting. <clears throat> I'm just going to hit this with a whisk the old style way. I got the dough hook on there and I'm too lazy to change it for the whisk. I'll just do it by hand. Check on our sausage casings while we wait. Yeah, they feel like they reconstituted to come right back, no problem. They feel pretty good. So that that's a plus. Okay, I got our mix here with our spices. Our paprika is minutes away. Um, I forgot a step. I'm going to use this spoon to separate the egg from the yolk. The egg white from the egg yolk. Like so. You save that for your omelet in the morning if you want. I don't have a use for it, so I'm just throwing it away right now. And that's going to help as a binder, too. One egg white. Wash the raw eggs off my hands. Just try to stay sanitized as best that I can. I'm using an antibacterial dish liquid for hand cleaning. Make sure I kill as many bacteria off my hands as I can. I don't want to contaminate this food at all. So I'm going to whisk that egg white in with our spice mixture and water. That's all ready. We got to stir in some paprika here, a tablespoon. We're using smoked paprika. So in here, healthy dose of paprika. There might be two more tablespoons left. I think it adds color and some flavor. It turned the whole bowl pink. If you can see this or not. Turn the whole bowl pink now. Where's that? Other? So in here, we have six pounds of ground beef. We're gonna blend it, incorporate it, if you will, with the spices. Lock the mixer down, put it on low. I'm just going to try to hold it still so it does more of the grinding part with the mixer. 
dough hook you cut it. Because of the water, it's just pushing it around the bowl in a circle. I use a wood spoon, so in an emergency, it may break off instead of your arm. Try now two, three. Looks like it's safely going to mix on three. Hi. I'm going to wash my hands quick. It's not so much about the spices, you can adjust the spices to your taste. The most important thing is the milk, the egg whites, and if you're using lean meat, the applesauce keeps it moist, just like fat would. But we didn't want to ruin our, our high grade uh, lean grass fed beef. So now, we'll see how it looks. Safety purposes, we're going to take that off of there and look for lumps. I see some, and I feel some with this spoon, paddle, whatever you want to call it. Maybe it's a, a spatula, I don't know. Bowl scraper. Any of you guys there at home know what the heck that's called, let me know. Okay. I believe that's plenty good enough, plenty mixed enough. Because it's going to get mixed some more. I'm going to find an actual spoon here. And just make sure we got all the spices off the bottom. Looks good. Now what we need to do lid. we need to crank this through the food processor. Turn it into a pink putty. You're gonna have to do this in batches unless you got some kind of big super powerful big giant machine that I don't but it's okay because all the spices are already mixed in evenly and start with a pulse now it's gonna get noisy but I'm gonna let it run Time to empty out another batch. This will be the last batch that we got to cut in the food processor. That was 
almost an accident. Stupid food processors are walking across the counter. About ready to go ass over tea kettle on the floor running. It's actually looking like it's done. You don't want to let this stuff dry on here. Put it in water right away. like this stuff. I'm going to choose to clean my stuff up later. A, my lovely wife will help me. And B, this meat can't sit out and get warm. I could put it in the refrigerator. But I want to get stuff started here. It's a long process yet. Real quick, just to show you, there's no blade in here, just a retaining ring that holds the auger in place. Then your stuffer horn and the ring. Just to lubricate it until it gets going with the meat and whatnot. I put just a drop of oil in there. Maybe that was a tablespoon max. Now I'm going to run it in reverse so it don't pump the oil out right away. Now forward. And then now reverse. All right. Okay, we need something to catch everything in. That's what that's for. Take one of our sausage casings, use it to wet this horn. Okay. This is a little tricky sometimes find the end. Look at that, I got it first shot. And then you got to guide it with one hand and gently put it on with the other. Kind of like this. Keep that in the center. Take your time so you don't tear it. Now we could be using small lambskin casings, like you make fingerling sausages with or something. Now you could take that and tie it in a knot, but I don't, I use string. It's 100% cotton twine, butcher's twine. And, uh, Whole rolls two bucks. Don't worry about cutting it too short so you can't tie it. Just get that loop there. Inch or so hanging out of the knot. And just 
tie a knot in it like that. Pull it back. That'll hold it from coming out the other end. We take some of this and load it up here so once we start working we can work. plunger to push it in. Whoa, we didn't want to do that. We can crack this loose and let some air out until we get her ready. You're actually supposed to feed the sausage through the nozzle before you uh, put the casing on. I kind of did the bit steps backwards. All right, we're gonna put this on now and feed. And you gotta kinda of hold tension here. And as it fills up, let it go. Gonna poke a little hole in the end of it. It's really tough. It's not really just a basic sausage stuffer. It's a, also a uh, it's a grinder, and I, I don't know. The auger's not pushing like it. I would like it to. Now I'm cutting two pieces of string here because the casing broke because I wasn't paying attention. I kind of had my hands full um, trying to feed the machine. So basically, you're just going to tie the string around there on both sides to break in the casing. Like so. And then... This can be cut off here. See, there's a hole in it. Pinch this casing and squeeze that down in there a little better. Firm it up. 
throw this back on the other end of the assembly line. Tie a string on this end in a knot like we did the other. And then uh, and separate this here into two links. You can twist it. Or you could tie it with a, a string there. Um, now what we're going to do with this, for now, we're going to tie this together. So they stay together at the one end. We'll cut the string off after. Now We have some water cooking here with an electric thing, an electric uh, torpedo cooker thing. We're going to submerge this in here and we're going to poach that for about 20 minutes in that towel right there. And we got a clean kitchen towel here and what that's going to do With that clean, give me tongs, Jim. That clean kitchen towel, we threw that right on top of there. It's going to keep it submerged underwater entirely. Now we got to watch the clock. That's going to be about 10 minutes, I think. Uh, it might be 20. I never did it before. We got to check. But we're looking for internal temperature of 150. Now that's not going to be a cooked hot dog, that's going to be a prepared hot dog. They're going to still be raw for all intents and purposes. That's going to kill the bacteria for, make them last longer in the uh, refrigerator. That's what it looks like. More like boiled sausage. I think the way to do it would be to really smoke it. Give it that red color. Let's have that thermometer. We're going to stick it inside here for a test probe. We're looking for 150 internally. It's at 49.4. 150. So that's that. Set this here for now. That hang there. Need some strings. You can do this before you start if you want. Fibrous two and a half inch by 20 casings. I've got one left. What I'm going to do is just try to stuff all this meat in here. I don't know how messy it's going to get, but. I want to try something else while I'm at it. I'm going to see you seeing this a little differently. If 
another tablespoon of salt. Some more cracked black pepper. Coarsely cracked black pepper. As much as I have the patience to put in there. Maybe a teaspoon or so. To mix that quick. All right, this is mixed. Here's how you test it you take a little bit out and just cook it. See the little bit there? 30 seconds or so in the microwave. And that's how you check how your seasoning levels are so you can taste it. I mean, I'm not eating it raw like this, even though it's been frozen and cold and all that. We mix it a little more. Piece of the microwave's done, but it's going to be nuclear hot. I think it needs more lemon juice. Jim, get the lemon. Get the sugar up there. It's a total of five caps of lemon juice. Two tablespoons of sugar. Put that away. I think a big funnel would help too. Let's see what happens here. Let's try this stuff. Taste the sugar now. I hate I think it needs more smoke. It's almost there. Maybe another two teaspoons. We're going to add some more pepper. Get two pounds of meat to this. I'm just going to try to drop chunks and let them fall and then pack it down.
I gotta rest this here a minute. Hopefully, don't can't even break. I'll be right back. I want them here first. Down here low. I'm just gonna rinse this off quick. It's loose with air pockets in it. I don't want that, I want it tight. So. Have a toothpick. And I see the air hole there, so I'm gonna put an air hole in there. At the air bubble, I should say. See if there's one there. One there, one there, down here. And then what I'm going to do is try to twist this in the middle and also squeeze that air out of there. Okay? Let's start by squeezing my fingers in here. Go slow and gentle so you don't rip this because then you're done. See the air bubble? Another one. I'm gonna squeeze it there and then twist. There. We're making two chubs. Now they're pretty tight, but if you bear with me here, it's air. Spot the air bubbles, give them a little poke. It's not the right way, but it's going to fix this. All right, just to make sure we don't lose our twist. We're going to string tie it also. It's already coming out. It wants to unspin. So while we got our kinked, pinched off into two sausages, if you will, we're going to tie the string to hold it. Like so. And then they're pretty firm. If I can get another string next to that, Jim, we could put that right in the pot. We'll see what we can do here. Things look like they're twisted, intertwined. We need to make another wrap. Yeah, it's not going to happen. We covered with water in here. Once my water is come back here to the stove. No extra charge for the pyrotechnic show. All we did with these is
Blanched them in that water so they set up and hold their form, so to speak. Okay? If you wanted skinless hot dogs or sausages, at this point, you could just probably peel this casing right off here. Before you freeze them. See that? little vegetable oil in there we'll use this one here to push the oil around the pan taste them see how they are huh Set that out there in somewhere, out here in the microwave or on the counter. I think they'd have a traditional red color if you cold smoked them and left it like that, didn't parboil them or anything. Turn my pan on low. I won't want to brown them so much. They get a good cook on them. Brown them up like nice sausages anyway. It's not a bad starting reference point, but eventually I'm going to make them look so they look almost like store-bought hot dogs, but they're good and healthy for you. Just a regular bridge. That's what I want. I don't want all that stuff. You better go grab another loaf too. There's white bread open in there too, another one. It's up to 183. While this was cooking, we went and ate too many hot dogs. Um, they taste just like hot dogs. The color's off, that's all, and the size. Uh, very delicious with onions, mustard, ketchup, pickles, whatnot, however you like them. But uh, this cooked salami here came out excellent too. Um, after a couple days after this video was shot, we tasted it. Um, it didn't last long. <laughs>